lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging, there's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're talking fishing hot spots. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. You know, in the upper Midwest, we're really blessed to have such a variety of water to fish, lake streams, uh, rivers, great lakes, etc. Not only that, there's a variety of fish species to target. And on one day, maybe one thing is the walleyes are off, so you can go ba bass fishing, pan fishing, musky fishing. But I think understanding what and why and where these fish are biting can really help you dial in to have very successful days and save a lot of time doing it. Definitely, Troy, and I think that there's a way to approach waters to discover new hot spots. For example, each lake has its own pulse, meaning there's a rotation of bites. So like you said, you could start fishing for walleyes, end mm -hmm. up fishing for bass, maybe chase crappies in the evening. Yeah, it can be kind of a, a complicated algorithm to put all those pieces together. So let's dive in a little bit deeper about the how, when, and where of fishing hot spots. Fishing hot spots. Seems like every angler's got at least a few. What's the best way to find that next hotspot? Learn to recognize seasonal peaks as guideposts for how, when, and where to catch fish. From there, realize that fish aren't necessarily doing the same thing at the same time on all waters, even lakes right across the road from each other. In fact, each lake has its own pulse. From species to species, there's an ebb and flow of optimal windows for the best bites throughout the seasons. The reason behind all of this is ecology. Factors like forage availability, water level, seasonal changes in water temperature and clarity. Even fishing pressure can make or break a bite for all kinds of fish. Difficult fishing scenarios can include high water conditions that spread out fish, an overabundance of forage, poor visibility during algae blooms, and the list goes on. But savvy anglers know there's an exception to every rule, and sometimes the exception becomes the rule. High waters can mean incredible bites on fisheries like Devil's Lake, where walleyes seek out the influx of food in recently flooded areas, or on rivers, which push fish close to shore and out of the current. What about algae-stained waters? Some of our best upper Midwest bass fishing has been punching the edges of boggy bulrush stands or frog in the jungle when the water greens up. Over time, anglers learn to make snap judgments about where, what, and how to fish on any given day through ongoing mental note-taking of these variables. Some keep a journal for future reference, whether that's an old notebook, an app, or typing in notes with waypoints on a fish finder. It doesn't take long before patterns emerge. Like the optimal times to fish a lake littered with deep brush piles for crappies. The river conditions necessary to scrimmage with big summer bronzebacks. Or what to do when fellow walleye anglers are belly aching about the mayfly hatch. Like avoiding that to go fish deeper rock humps with a jigging wrap. Yes, paying attention to changes in weather, water conditions, and forage for numerous waters can really put the odds in your favor. And before you know it, you'll have a pretty extensive list of hot spots too. You know, understanding weather conditions and how it affects fish is very important. Say it's really windy outside. All right, the bass aren't biting. What do you do? You can go fish walleye, you can go fish pike, you can go fish muskie. There's a lot of options available if you're a multi-species angler and you're willing, I guess, to switch gears, so to speak. Good points, Troy. And along with weather, you got to find where the food trucks are parked. That wind's blowing. I'm looking to the windswept shorelines for bait fish and the fish mm -hmm. that follow. You know, or you might have perch and weeds, crayfish over rock, mayflies over soft bottom. Food's a huge part of the equation. Yes, it is. One thing is for certain, you find the food, you find the fish. This Underwater Minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. What constitutes a fishing hotspot? Well, logically it's a location with a large concentration of biting fish. But why are so many fish attracted to that one spot? Chances are, food. In fishing, there is an interesting parallel between game fish and the forage they feed on. Do big fish move to classic structures, points, humps, weeds, or rocks without regards to food? 
or do they follow their food as they move seasonally to the best available habitat in the lake? In most cases, the answer is clear. You can't eat what's not there. For example, this time of year, a large portion of the walleye population migrates from the shallow shoreline structures toward main lake humps and points. Why? Their preferred forage, often perch and shiners, has shifted away from the warming waters of the shallows. Same can be said in lots of lakes where bluegills are the main forage of largemouth bass. As the bluegills move out to the newly developed deep weed line, schools of bass are often not far behind. So what does this tell us? You have to follow the forage to find your next fishing hotspot. You can actually see the individual minnows. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be. Until I added smooth moves to my boat, its four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time now for a highlight destination feature. We're going to four different locations across Angling Buzz country. And here in Minnesota, we have some of the best smallmouth and largemouth fishing. You're talking for three to five pound bass that rivals anywhere in the country. No doubt, Troy. And speaking of bass, we also have white bass. Devil's Lake, North Dakota, they grow big and they're big numbers. Lots of fun. They're pelagics, meaning that they roam the basin. They're chasing bait fish. They're tons of fun to catch, almost like salt water. Mm -hmm. From there, we're going to go to the Great Lakes. The salmon bite is heating up. And then we're going to end up at Lake of the Woods chasing walleyes. Ooh, that's nice. 100 fish days and drag peeling runs sound good? You bet it does. Look no further than Devil's Lake, North Dakota's summer white bass bite. A scrappy, hard pulling fish that makes for endless rod bending fun and great table fare. Devil's has numbers and giants, with fish up to the four pound mark and most in the two and a half to three pound range. Find a stretch of wind-blown hard bottom bank or riprap around bridges, bottlenecks, and channels, and you're in business from a boat or shore. And keep your eyes peeled for open water feeding frenzies of busting bait and bass. How to catch them? Hard to go wrong, fan casting cranks, curly tail grubs, and swim baits. But whatever you throw, better hang on. From the Rainy River to Big Traverse Bay to the Northwest Angle, and more water extending north into Canada, Lake of the Woods is very much the walleye capital of the world for anglers of all skill levels. Anglers have been reporting a strong midsummer bite with lots of eaters, bonus trophies, and lots of personal bests. And right now, you can catch them all day long, even in full sun, thanks to the system's stained waters, whether pulling bouncers, cranks, or jigging and rigging. And with so much water to explore, you don't have to play bumper boats to get bit. If walleyes are what you're after and some up north R&R to boot, don't miss out on Lake of the Woods excellent summer walleye opportunities. From Detroit Lakes to the Alexandria region, Leech Lake to Mille Lacs, and the Twin Cities Metro, 
Minnesota is big on bass opportunities. Long ignored by walleye, panfish, and muskie hunters, more anglers are beginning to tap this underutilized thumb scraping resource. It's kind of funny. After recent Bassmaster and Major League Fishing tournaments in Minnesota, bass bros are all saying the same thing. We had no idea, and when can we come back? Yes, for numbers of two to four pound fish, Minnesota's hard to beat, and there's always that shot at a five, six, or even seven pounder. Whether it's punching Minnetonka's milfoil, cranking deep weeds or rock up north, or skipping and flipping an endless supply of docks, Minnesota's sleeper bass fishery has something for everyone. The salmon action is heating up around the Great Lakes. Lake Michigan, in particular, is on fire. From Algoma to Sheboygan to the Windy City and all around the bend up the Michigan coast. Kings, Cohos, Bonus Browns and Lakers. Yes, it's a rod-bendingly good time, whether you take your own boat or book a charter or prefer shore casting at River Mouse or from a pier. Let's be honest, this kind of fishing is a freezer pleaser with a return on investment that's perfect for the smoker, grill, or broiler. Salmon fishing the Great Lakes. Yes, it's pretty hard to beat for a great weekend with friends or good old family fun. That's some exciting summer fishing. You know, it's really too bad you can't fish everywhere all at the same time. I know that Great Lakes run, you know, you throw a cooler in the truck, you come back with some fish to put on the smoker, pays huge dividends sometimes. Yes, it does. I'm getting hungry just thinking about that. All right, let's get to our BuzzBite reports. Here's the first from our field reporters in their region. Hey, I'm Toby Kvalibog with Leisure Outdoor Adventures, bringing you this week's Angling Buzz Fishing Report for Leech Lake. We just finished up the Ultimate Fishing Camp, sponsored by Lund Boats here in Walker, Minnesota at Chasing the Lake. We had 10 pros on the water for three days straight, fishing with multiple anglers from Florida to California. It was a sweet deal. Uh, we fished lots of fish, lots of species. Northern Pike were shallow in the weeds still. Uh, seems like spoons were uh, kind of the best tactic there. Billy Rosser put us on a lot of pike using spoons. Uh, musky fishing was a little bit slow. Uh, we did see some fish and some nice ones on the main lake. It seems like they're a little bit deep yet off the structure. Walleye fishing, as it's been, uh, corking with leeches, Lindy rigs with leeches, jigs and leeches, and uh, some jigging wraps. Uh, all put fish in the boat, got a lot of keepers and a nice fish fry. So Leech Lake is still going strong. Looks like a really cool event with Lund Boats. Now let's check in with Peter Olson in North Dakota. There's another one. In this week's Buzz Bite Report, we're gonna talk about a few tips to help you catch more fish on the river. First, you need to have a good assortment of colors. The two most overlooked colors for the river are pinks and purples, so make sure you have those. On a clear water day, try translucent and metallic colors. That seems to do the trick. But when the water's muddy, try bright colors that glow in the dark. The walleyes can see them better and you'll catch more fish. Second is leader length. Don't be afraid to go long. Our favorite length is 68 inches. Third, make sure you're fishing the bottom. We really like the wing it quick swap bottom bounces system because you can change in a snap to match the conditions you're fishing. Finally, don't forget the holes that are in the middle of the river. They tend to hold more and bigger fish. As for the hot spot in North Dakota, the Van Hook Arm of Lake Sakakawea is doing really well. 25 to 27 inch fish are common, with tournaments being won with over 30 pound bags. There's a nice one. And that's this week's Buzz Bite Report. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack. Cargo trunk. Bucket caddy. Jaws of Ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy. 
fishing game boards, and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel outdoors. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now let's check in on the Michigan Bite with Captain Ben Wolf. Lake trout fishing remains consistently good across the state. Anglers on Lake Michigan are finding nice catches along the bottom fishing cowbells and spoons. For salmon anglers, finding the thermocline is critical to finding the active fish. Trolling spoons at or near the thermocline is the key to getting these active fish to bite. Bass fishing remains red hot across the state and for those anglers looking for an explosive topwater bite, we have some great opportunities. Walking style baits and poppers are a great option this time of the year. One of my favorites this time of year are soft plastic jerk baits twitched just below the surface. These can lead to some very visually and exciting strikes. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com. Up next, we're headed to Wisconsin to check in with Jeff Evans. Uh, we're in the Hayward Lakes area today. Uh, the walleye bite has just really been phenomenal. I'll tell you what we're doing. These fish are in transition right now. Uh, we're actually out on rocks in 25, 26, 27 feet of water, using our ele electronics to locate them, uh, using slip bobbers with leeches, just suspending them over those fish, maybe a foot or two off bottom. And then we're picking up a bunch of bonus fish on that jig and wrap. I mean, that, that bait is no secret anymore how effective it is, and it's amazing how many fish that you'll get even just vertically working that as you're watching the slip bobbers. Um, we're also getting a few smallmouth mixed in, um, so those, those smallmouth bass are in transition as well. You can still get a lot of smallmouth up in the shallows, uh, five, six, seven feet of water in the rocks on top waters and dragging uh, heavy jigs with plastics. Um, but also, like I said, we're getting them out in the deeper water as well. So we've got transition going on both the walleyes and the smallmouth bass. Yep, it's that time of summer when fish are in transition. So make sure to fish shallow to deep and everywhere in between. Now let's check in with Billy Rosner up on Minnesota's Lake Vermilion. Finally getting those water temperatures 70 plus up here and that means top water time for pike and muskie. Uh, some of my favorites out here, the Booker Top Raider, the Tally Whacker, very patient bait to fish but very effective. The good old globe, this has been good to me over the years, and the mud puppy. Areas I like fishing these baits, uh, your weed lines, uh, some of your cabbage flats, those are really effective areas to throw these. Your reefs, some of your, your points and rock piles, all are great top water places on the lake. And it's probably the most exciting way you're ever gonna catch a pike or a muskie is on a top water. The walleye bite continues to hold its own. We have a lot of young of the year perch about this size in the system. Uh, trolling, lead core with your number five shad wraps on your brakes are very effective. Have a great week and be safe out there. Those are some giant muskies and I can't think of a better way to catch them than on top waters. Now let's check in with Josh Hagemeister in central Minnesota. We're popping fish on jigging wraps just like we were 20 years ago. Thing I like to do the best though is number five, nice and small. They're looking for small forage this time of year. So put the big ones away and fish shallow weeds. Right now we're working weed beds all over the central part of the state in that six to 10 foot range. We're talking cabbage weeds mainly. We're popping walleyes out of there. We're popping uh, big old crappies, largemouth bass, some northern pike. Even once in a while, if you're on certain lakes, you might even get a musky follow. But anyway, uh, that's what I've been doing lately and we've been catching all kinds of fish. So maybe want to give that a shot. Wow, our temps are in the low 70s to high 60s on uh, lakes with uh, open water pelagic bait fish. I like to use the white ones on uh, shallow water lakes where there's more perch and sunfish. I like to use the perch patterns. And for this week's final buzz bite report, we're headed up to meet with Joe Sakura in the Alexandria region to find out what's hot in West Central Minnesota. It's mid-July and we're still catching a good number of 15, 20 inch walleyes. Finding them on the outside weed edges, uh, inside turns, out on the points, uh, just pulling lindy rig, leech, uh, crawler through them. 
um, even a bobber and a leech or a swim bait. Uh, those are ideal conditions. The less than ideal conditions, uh, we just had a big storm blow through here. Or uh, if you find yourself out there midday and calm, um, we have ultra clear water, so they're going to be pushing much deeper under these less than ideal conditions, 30, 35 foot of water. Um, and as well as in the weeds, you're going to go along there with a camera or your sonar, side imaging, and you're going to see those fish stacked in those weed pockets. Um, and you're going to have to use a very uh, precise technique as well. So I'll throw a bobber and a leech or a swim bait into those weeds and um, target those concentrated fish there. Or as well as out in the deep water, I'm going to pull a lindy rig through those uh, very negative fish that are very tight to the bottom. But if you uh, dig a little harder, you can turn a less than ideal day today uh, into a great one. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Now it's time for our cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Well, it's hot out there. The one way to keep your beverages cold is from Yeti, these tumblers. This will keep your hot beverages hot, your cold beverages cold. If it's cold mornings, uh, your coffee will stay nice and warm. And this is really neat. This is a cold sir. So you just twist the top off, put your soda can right inside like that, twist it back on. That'll stay cold for a very long time when you're done. Just repeat that process as needed. These are from Yeti. And midsummer time right now, bass fishing has been hot. And when you think of a uh, delivery system for soft plastics, VMC and Northland Tackle have some great options. The weedless wacky right here work great with the Northland Tackle impulse stick baits right here. You can also put them on a wacky jig, a weighted wacky jig like this to get down a little bit deeper. The finesse half moon works great for swim baits, externally weighted tubes. Uh, these also hook up really good, nice thin diameter, so longer cast, lighter line. These work really good. The RZ jig, if you're walleye fishing, pop jigging with these impulse swim baits is an excellent option. The VMC spin shot for the little drop shot baits is perfect. And also the inner tube from uh, Northland Tackle is a great internally weighting system for the impulse tubes as well. These are great options from both Northland Tackle and VMC jigs. It's important to have a good buoy inside the boat. Here's a couple different options. I'm going to start with the lighted marker buoy from Rappel. This is actually has a, a sensor on this. When it comes in contact with the water, it actually lights up. So low light conditions or if you're night fishing, this is a perfect option. This is the lighted marker buoy from Rappel. And then a regular buoy like this one right here, the hotspot fishing marker buoy. You can have a darker color like this or a lighter one. Darker color is nice if you don't necessarily want to see uh, other people around you see where you're fishing. So these are a couple great options for buoys. And summertime is a great time for trolling for walleyes. This combo from Daiwa is priced right, right around 100 bucks. It has great action, as you can see, good flex, good backbone in the rod. It also has a line counter reel, which is important. If you're trolling, you're probably fishing lead core or even braid. You know how critical it is to get the baits at that perfect speed and depth. And this is really, really nice So you both have the gear. You have the clicker here as well. You have the line counter. Everything is built in, priced right, right around 100 bucks from Daiwa. 
All of these products are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm store, as well as online at fleetfarm.com. One last thing I quickly want to tell you about from Mercury, the Spitfire X7 four blade prop. Now this is really unique because this is made, it's a high performance four blade prop made for smaller outboards, 75 horsepower to 115 horsepower. You got good surface area, it gets a lot of bite, that great hole shot when you hit, when you hit the throttle as well as uh, performance at top end speed. It's made with their X7 alloy, so it's extremely strong, 30% stronger than regular stainless steel. This is from Mercury, the Spitfire X7. Right now it's time for our technique of the week. We're heading out to Michigan with Captain Ben Wolf. We figured out what depth these fish want. They want 95 to 100 feet. And so we're just idling around the structure and we're looking for marks on the bottom. So like for instance, here's, here's a trout right there on the bottom. What I'm looking for, hopefully, are a few marks around the bottom. And that would indicate, you know, a small school. One of the really key things for me, at least on this boat, is I've got a graph on my trolling motor, and I've got a graph back here, and they're separated by 20 feet. So that front graph is really critical to tell me what's coming up so that I can try and position the boat perfectly in between what I'm marking. Here's a school up front on the graph, so I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna hit spot lock on my iPilot. And we're gonna fish them. All right, so we've got a really nice mark right here. We're in 95 feet and just off the bottom, we've got a really nice trout mark. What I like about doing this with a bait caster is I can control all of my line with one hand. If I need to let up more line, my thumb is right here for the spool, and then I can engage the reel with my ring finger right on the star drag there and the reel handle. There's one down there, he just swirled again, and he just ate it. <laughs> That's what I want every time. You mark them, you drop down, you hook up. That's a really fun way to catch fish. You know, deep water fishing with your electronics like that applies to a lot of different species of fish. No doubt, Troy. And on next week's show, we're hanging out with the river rats. It's going to be a fun one. Yeah, it is. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, please remember, clean, drain, and dry. Be sure to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com. That's where we have all of our current guide reports, tips, tactics, articles to help you catch fish right now. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you out on the river. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Ray Brosnan. Lee Talkin here. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.